TID Radio has sent me their H8 ham radio set and I'm going to do a quick review on it. I'm not going to bore you with the unboxing or the fact that you've got a cradle that you can put it in and stuff. I'm pretty sure you can figure this stuff out. Now let's be fully upfront with everybody. They gave me the radio for free to review. Honestly, I love the thing and I probably would have bought it anyways. Keep in mind that this is an honest review and not everything is good about it. There are links down below with a discount code for you to purchase this radio and it will help this channel out. If you're looking for a Christmas gift, this is a really good bang for the buck. It's got a lot of power. It's got a few flaws, but the company is slowly building these things up and fixing them. Is it as good as a Kenwood or a Yesu? I honestly don't know. And do you know why? I can't afford those ones, but I can't afford this one. If you have one of these, I don't think I really need to tell you how to operate it. And I'm not going to go through all of that kind of stuff. There is one thing that I think is missing from all of this, and that is how to program it via Bluetooth. It's really not all that clear in the manual, and I'm just going to go through it here. It's a bit of a workaround, but let's be honest, it's ham radio. Most everything's kind of kludgy, and you have to jump from software package to software package and make things work. Because this old master system is not all that new, you have to manually input all the repeaters. And I'm lazy, so if I can't just download from repeater book, like you can in Chirp, I'm probably not going to input it. What I've done is, is I've done the initial programming through Chirp, and then I've saved online via the old master system. Once we are in Chirp, I can come into radio, I can query a source and go to radio reference, repeater book. We'll say Alberta, only certain bands. I like the 10 and or 70 centimeter and two meter band. Certain modes, I'm just gonna do FM and within a certain radius of where I am located. And that gives me a list of local repeaters that I can add to my radio. And I don't have to manually input them. One thing I have noticed is, is with this cable, right there, it is just touching the outside edge of the body of the radio. I need to give it a good little push, and then that way it will actually work. Now the step after all of this is to get it up into the Oldmaster system, and this is online. so. If you don't like sharing your files, you don't like some of this stuff public, then this is probably not for you and like you can skip the video. One thing you have to do, make sure you do, is hit the Bluetooth or the BL button. You notice right there, it shows the uh, Bluetooth. And at this point, we need to come in here, connect to Bluetooth. In here, you're gonna need to choose what you have. So I have the TDH8 ham, and we wanna read. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull from the radio to the phone. And now that we have that, we can come into all the different channels and the frequencies that we have set up, and we can edit or change everything as we need to. It's very important that you hit save, and we're gonna call this November 22nd. And we're going to confirm. Now let's say that you've popped back out and then you're going to come back in. You're going to hit program and setting. And you'll notice as soon as you hit programs and setting, it immediately reset to the default. This is not the one that you just saved. And the way that you recall that is, is that you come to the RXTX list and then you click on there. And then at that point you have everything set up and then you can write to your phone. This is a bit of a workaround and it's it's annoying. Another thing that I find that is kind of annoying about this this whole app is that you land on here and you've got the hotspot and the radio and a group and a repeater and feedback and blinky lights and then people are wanting to chat to you and then there's me and then there's programming. All I want is programming. It should show up just to that. All this extra fluff really does not interest me. At that point, you're pretty much done. We can go online and take a look at where everything has been saved since. Here we are, you come to web.oldmaster.net after you've created the, uh, the user and everything for this. And you'll notice that the November 22nd one is in here and I can come in and I can edit it. This is nowhere near as easy to edit as on Chirp. 
you've got a lot of drop down menus um, and it's I don't know it just feels clunky and I don't feel like it's easy to work around however from your computer you can't upload this to your radio you have to go back onto your phone open that app and use that app to upload to your radio now I do realize that this is a newer software and they are working on it there are a few annoyances but hey maybe that's just me the screen on this compared to all the other radios that I've played with especially the color ones is awesome outside you can actually read it outside in full sunlight the mic gain on this in all honesty really kind of it's not that great so what you want to do is this let's go to menu and we're gonna scroll up from the bottom and there's the mic gain you want to hit menu and again on this one crank it all the way up to 32. It is very important you do that because this one just doesn't seem to pick up people's voices very well. A um, little bit of a manic build, but something just occurred to me. The slot antennas, this here on the outside is a slot and I hooked up a, a connector to it. I'm terribly, terribly excited. So we'll go and see about weather. Per hour, time minus one. So it receives. It's not too bad. Can we hit the repeater? Man, if this works, vanity antennas. This is Victor Echo 6, Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray. I am doing a new antenna test. Is there anybody that confirm they can hear me on the repeater?